Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I've got a problem which was adapted from an MIT integration B problem. We have the integral from minus 1 to infinity of the ceiling of 1 over the ceiling of x minus x, all raised to the power of minus the ceiling of x. So a lot of ceiling functions going on in here. And for anyone that's not seen the ceiling function before, it basically gives you the smallest integer bigger than or equal to your input. So for example, the ceiling of 4.2 is the biggest integer small uh, sorry the smallest integer bigger than or equal to 4.2 so that's going to be 5 and the ceiling of pi is going to be 4 so you're basically rounding up to the next integer and just for completeness sake the ceiling of an integer is just going to be that integer anyway if you want to have a go at evaluating this problem pause the video now and give it a go for yourself and i'm going to jump straight into a solution <laughs> Okay, so a common trick for evaluating integrals where you've got a ceiling function or a floor function or anything like that is to convert that integral into a summation of integrals. So this thing here is going to become the sum from n being equal to minus 1 up to infinity of the integral from n to n plus 1 of exactly what we have here, the ceiling of 1 over, minus, 1 over the ceiling of x minus x raised to the power of minus the ceiling of x. Well, why is this true? All I've changed is this minus 1 to infinity integral to an infinite sum of an integral from n to n plus 1. Uh, well, if we notice that this starts from minus 1, this thing here also starts from minus 1, because when I plug in n equals minus 1, I get minus 1 up to 0. When I plug in 0, I'm going to get 0 to 1. And when I plug in 1, I'm going to get 1 to 2, and so on. So if I add up all these integrals here, I'm just going to get this integral here. So this does indeed equal this guy here. And the reason we want to do this is to kind of eliminate uh, some of the ceiling functions here. Because if we notice, in this integral range here between n and n plus 1, the ceiling of x is always going to be equal to n plus 1. So in fact, I can just go ahead and replace any um, occurrence of the ceiling of x with just n plus 1. So this guy here is going to be n plus 1, and this guy here is going to be n plus 1, like so. And now we've removed two of the ceiling functions, but as you'll see, we've still got another ceiling function in, involved, so we want to get rid of that. But we'll do that in just a second. What we want to do is kind of simplify this integral just by doing a u substitution. So we're going to have u equals uh, x minus n, so that just gives us that du equals dx, and then this guy here just becomes a sum from n equals minus 1 to infinity of the integral. Well, when x is n, u is going to be 0, and when x is n plus 1, u is going to be 1 of the ceiling of 1 over n plus 1 minus x. Well, we've got an n minus x there. That's just going to be minus u, and then we've still got the 1. So the ceiling of 1 over 1 minus u raised to the power of minus n plus 1, and then dx is just du. So now this guy here becomes this guy here. And all of a sudden we've gotten rid of the ends from the integral. And this looks a little bit cleaner than what we have up there. But as I say, we've still got a ceiling function here that we want to deal with. And as we as I said before, whenever we have an integral of a ceiling or an integral of something that involves a ceiling function or a floor function, we want to write that as the sum of integrals. So this is going to equal the sum from n equals minus 1 to infinity of the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of now we're going to have the integral from 1 minus 1 over m to 1 minus 1 over m plus 1 of the ceiling of 1 over 1 minus u to the minus n plus 1 du. Okay, and you may ask, well, why does this hold? So all we've basically done is change this integral here, the integral from 1 to 1, with this guy here, the sum from m equals 1 to infinity of the integral from 1 minus 1 over m to 1 minus 1 over m plus 1. Well, does this hold? The answer is yes. When I plug in n equals 1, this bottom limit here is 1 minus 1, so 0. And this top limit here is going to be a half, so that gives me 0 to a half. And then when I plug in m equals 2, I get a half to uh, 1 minus a third, so 2 thirds. So now I've got 0 to a half and then half to 2 thirds. Then I'm going to get 2 thirds to 3 quarters, 3 quarters to 4 fifths, and so on. And as we see, when we take m to infinity, this top limit here is going to tend to 1. 
So indeed, this guy here does equal this guy here. And now the reason we chose one minus one over m and one minus one over m plus one is well, because if u is in this range here, you can just quickly check that then m plus m, sorry, is gonna be less than uh, one over one minus u, and that's gonna be less than m plus one. So if u is in this range here, then you have that m is less than one over uh, one minus u, and that's gonna be less than m plus one. And why is that important? Well, it's gonna let us get rid of this ceiling function here, because this ceiling function here, the input is one over one minus u, and we know it's between m and m plus one. So that means the ceiling of it is just gonna be m plus one. So I can get rid of this and replace it with m plus one, and that's still raised to the minus m plus one. And now what we have is an integral of, which involves m and n, but notice it doesn't contain u. So the next step is just to evaluate this integral, which is straightforward. It's gonna be this guy here multiplied by the length of this interval. But then remember, we still got these two infinite series here to deal with. Anyway, let me clean up the whiteboard and we'll continue. Okay, so we just showed that the integral that we're interested in is equal to the double infinite sum from n equals minus one to infinity, uh, from m equals one to infinity, of the integral from 1 minus 1 over m to 1 minus 1 over m plus 1 of m plus 1 to the minus m plus 1 du and as I said that integral there is independent of u so it's just equal to the infinite sum again so n equals minus 1 to infinity m equals 1 to infinity of now just m plus 1 to the minus m plus 1 multiplied by the length of the interval which is that guy minus that guy so that's just 1 over m minus 1 over m plus 1 like so. And this is quite nice, we can just simplify that, that's going to be 1 over m times m plus 1. So this is 1 over m times m plus 1, like so. And now all we have to do is evaluate this double infinite series here. The first thing I'm going to do is just swap the order of summation, which is fine because everything here is uh, positive. So if I swap this guy with this guy, I get n bigger than or equal to minus 1 and m bigger than or equal to 1 of this guy here, but then notice that this guy here is independent of n, so I can kind of bring it out of the first summation. So this is a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over m times m plus 1, multiplied by the sum from n equals minus 1 to infinity of this guy here. The sum n equals minus 1 to infinity of m plus 1 to the minus n plus 1. And now if you look at this guy here, you might realize that this thing here is nothing more than a geometric series with common ratio 1 over m plus 1. Because the first term here is going to be m plus 1 to the 0. Uh, because when I plug in n equals minus 1, I get to the 0 here. So that's just going to be 1. The next term is going to be 1 over m plus 1. The next term is going to be 1 over m plus 1 squared and so on off to infinity. So this thing here has a very nice formula. It's just the a over 1 minus r. And the first term here is just 1, and the common ratio is 1 over m plus 1. So this thing here is equal to 1 over 1 minus 1 over m plus 1, like so. And now we've just got one infinite series. You manage to get rid of one, replace it for a term to embed into our infinite series here. And now we've got 1 over m times m plus 1 times 1 over 1 minus 1 over m plus 1. So to simplify this guy here, let's multiply top and bottom by m plus 1. So on the top, we're going to get m plus 1. And on the bottom, we're going to get m plus 1 minus 1, which of course is just m. So now we've got the sum from m equals 1 to infinity of 1 over m times m plus 1 times m plus 1 over m. Of course, this m plus 1 and this m plus 1 cancel. And we can bring these two guys together to get that this is just the sum from m equals 1 to infinity of 1 over m squared. But now this is a very famous infinite series, um, and I think it's been solved lots of different ways. This is known as the Basel problem, solved I think first by Euler, and this guy here equals a very famous constant, pi squared over 6. Um, so this infinite series here, the sum of the reciprocals of the squares, is just pi squared over 6. And if you've not seen that result before, I've made a video in which I prove it actually using probability. So it's a non-standard proof. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. But the way you, uh, or what this sum equals is pi squared over 6. But this sum is just our initial integral. So this crazy looking integral that we started off with, the integral from minus 1 to infinity of the ceiling of 1 over the ceiling of x minus x, all raised to the minus the ceiling of x, that integral there is just equal to pi squared over 6, which I think is beautiful. 
Uh, that solves this problem. I hope you have enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. Sorry. The main trick we used was when we have an integral involving a ceiling function. Uh, all you, the, the best thing to do is just to write it as the sum of integrals. So we have this kind of scary looking thing here because you can't really use um, you know integration by parts or anything because this doesn't is not really differentiable. Um, so you have to use some other techniques, and that's why you use infinite sums to split it into things that you can actually digest and evaluate. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Um, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.